Welcome to Precon Powers for the Nitpicking Nerds. This time we're upgrading the Grixis Precon Maestro's Massacre for just 50 bucks. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. We have videos every single day, and if you want to support the channel, there's an easy way to do it, especially with these Precon videos. You can go to the link in the description for a TCG Player affiliate link, takes you to the site, buy what you'd normally buy the same way you'd buy it, and then when you check out, we get a kickback on the order without you spending any extra money. Which would be much, much appreciated. We also have to shout out our sponsor for this video, Moxfield.com. Stay tuned for the mid credit surprise sneak attack ad. Also want to wish a very special happy birthday to everyone whose birthday falls on today. And also, happy birthday to all your pets whose birthdays are today. And special shout out to our patron, Chase Lejeune, who gets a shout out because they're on a certain Patreon tier. So if you want to join them, there's a link in the description. Yeah, and one last thing before we get started, just so everyone knows, we're going to be at SCG Pittsburgh this weekend, which is like the end of April, beginning of May weekend. So, obviously, if you're watching us in the future, we've already gone. But if you're watching it, you know, the day it comes out, hey, come see us in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Joe's jamming Commander all weekend, and then I'm doing Team Sealed, and then I'll be jamming Commander for the rest of the weekend. Which is going to be super exciting. So, pre-con power-ups is where we take the pre-con, we take $50, and we slam them together to make a functional deck for, well, about $110 because these pre-cons are Pricey. Yeah, the hype is dying down for these ones because the price is going up. But we can read the commander to get started on what this deck actually is. Blue, black, red for a 1-3 death touch. The first instant or sorcery spell you cast each turn has casualty 2. Which means as you cast that spell, you may sacrifice a creature with power 2 or greater. When you do, copy the spell and you can choose new targets. So this deck's game plan is obviously to have a stream of tokens with at least two power that are disposable so that we can sacrifice them in order to copy our spells. And the win conditions, we're going to be building up tokens into a late game army, or aside from attacking for lethal, we might just copy some gigantic game ending spell. But before we do any of that, we got to first start cutting the cards that don't fit the game plan. They're in the precon. They kind of just do nothing and we don't need them. Yeah, the first one is Parnese, the Subtle Brush. Uh, this card just is kind of its own deck. I don't think it's very good at all. It a little bit goes with our game plan of copying spells, but I just don't think that's very interesting. I'm not giving out. I'm not giving out spells. No thanks. Uh, I'm out of budget here. We got Cyrix, Carrier of the Flame. This is so obviously just for its own thing. It's Phoenix Tribal. We're not playing that. So enough said. Yeah, Woe Strider also getting out of this deck. We don't need sack outlets, and I don't know why we would. This. Not interesting to a deck at all. I think it's supposed to be like a recurrable do it again. But you don't play this card for that. You play it as a sack all that. And we don't need the zero one. Like it's funny that, you know, we want a lot of tokens, but zero ones and one ones are of no value because we can't casualty them. Yeah, exactly. So some like just a note that you're not gonna see a young pyromancer get into this deck because we can't casualty all of his little dudes. Exactly. So it's pretty worthless to us. Yeah, Smuggler's Buggy, it has hideaway and it wants us to like crew it and attack and like we don't care about any of that stuff. It's literally not even close and Right of the Raging Storm. Again, I just don't know what this card is doing in our deck. doesn't feel like it's what we want to do. Sure, we get one of those Raging Storm tokens that we can sacrifice, kind of, but it's slow and not on our game plan. Five mana for one token a turn and not the turn you play it? Yeah, not interested. Not interested at all. Yeah, but now we get to add cards that do fit the game plan. This is some of like what we're really hoping to do. So we have Unexpected, Windfall, and Big Score. They both say discard a card and then draw two and make two treasures. So if we casualty these, which we're trying to casualty everything, on a little cheap, we're going to have them every game. We get four treasures and four cards. So we're up three cards, and the spell costs no mana. Yeah, this is this card. these cards are all very, very good. And what's really good about them is their instance on top of that. So we're just going to be doing these on other players' turns to get them. Yeah, Anholo wants us to, you know, the optimal thing, because we can only do it once per turn, is to instant speed casualty four times in a go-around. Yeah, to make it, like, that's optimal. There's also Brass's Bounty, which we added. This is going to be great. We're already... Basically, Brass's Bounty just lets you store up all your lands mana uh, for another turn, but you can do it twice. It's going to be really crazy, which is actually going to be insane for these next two cards, which are some of our win cons. Jaya Zimulating Inferno is one. We can target each of the players, use all of our mana, and whoa, we'll just copy that and do it again and hit each of the players again, doubling up the damage. Same with Cut to Ribbons. Early on, it's just like a mediocre removal spell, but then later we can deal, you know, let's say realistically like 8 to 12, maybe up to 15 damage, and then copy it and just finish people off. Yeah, and even though it's mediocre, we can double it still early game. 
So now that we've cut cards that don't fit the game plan, added some that do fit the game plan, now we're going to take cards out that did fit our game plan, but we can do a lot. And I mean a lot better than this. First category here, Casualty Fodder, Creatures to Sacrifice to Casualty. First, Blood Soak Champion. This would be fine, except for the fact that we are not looking to attack. This deck might not ever attack. You know, so, like some of the games we're going to be chipping away and dealing damage, and sometimes we just never even care. Also, Dogged Detective. I think this card should probably just stay out of your deck if you're not just like discarding it every turn, and we're obviously not doing that. Yeah, or budget. Uh, we're Kindling Phoenix. This card is fine, but again, it doesn't come back till our turn. It's really easy to get rid of the 1-1. One, one. It's not really reusable in a good way, so I'll just pass. Yeah, Sinister Concierge. It comes back, but it's way too slow. That's all I really want to say about it. That uh, Skyclave Shade, I love, like, this card should have just been Blood Gas. Uh, that would have been sick. This card stinks because we have to pay for it every time. Blood Gas is free. That would have been a lot better. Yeah, we can't afford to add Blood Gas with our $50 budget. Squee the Immortal! It's like Skyclave Shade, but more expensive. Even more expensive. So, again, just it's these aren't that interesting. Puppeteer Click. We can get a creature back from their graveyard. Again, these are too expensive. We need these tokens to come out and in the same turn, we want to be able to copy, do the spell again. Tons of things like that. We're not going to get that with something like Puppeteer Click. Yeah, Determined Iteration wants to, like, populate tokens, and we, we just, like, we're going to be having tokens, but they're not good enough that we want an extra 2-2 two -two once per turn. Yeah, not exactly. An extravagant replication, though we kind of want the token that it's going to make. This is slow and clunky. Now we can get into some of the ads here, and I, I like a lot of these cards. So we're on a budget, super tight, and we want stupid expendable 2-2 two -two tokens. Well, Decayed Zombies do that pretty well, so there's like a whole slew of those spells that cost like one cent and make a token. We got Rotten Reunion. It goes, exile someone's card from a graveyard, get a 2-2. Two -two. If we casualty the first half, we get two 2-2s. Two -two then we can casualty the flashback and get two more 2-2s, two -two and it doesn't matter that we can't really attack with them because they're just here to be casualty fodder. That's, that's why it's like... Instead of making one every upkeep, why don't we just use this spell and make three or four of them right away? Exactly, yeah. We can cast this T this super easily to get extra ones, and it makes them easily. Startle is next. We're going to get one of these tokens for two mana. We can cast it if we want to to get an extra one. But otherwise, we're just getting something to casually a different spell. And if you casualty it, you draw two cards. Yes. Next is Ghoulish Procession. We're not going to be able to make decay tokens really easily because we're sacrificing tokens all the time. But the game's just going to play out, and creatures are going to die on everyone's turn. Like, that's just going to happen. Especially when we're killing them. So we're just going to get, like, one decade or two decade zombies every turn cycle. Yeah, if you didn't know, this is actually kind of a secret control deck. We also have Jajar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia. He's just going to give us one free token every single go around. And on this budget that we're on, it's going to be pretty good. we got some regular zombie makers, too. So these guys can jam from under the floorboards. It's going to make three zombies. And if we can discard it with, like, big score or something, maybe we can copy the madness and get more than that. Mode of the Unhallowed, like, yeah, we're going deep. This is how bad we want 2-2 two -two tokens. Makes two, to two, two two twos for four mana and then flashback for, like, a thousand. I think it's going to be just good enough to be to be serviceable in this deck. And then Rise from the Tides, potential win condition. All of our instant stories from the graveyard are going to get us a 2-2 two -two zombie, so it's, like, six mana. Casualty it. Obviously, you have to casualty this card. And you're going to make, like, 20 zombies. What I think is actually really important for all these cards that we're listening that are very mediocre on average is that when you do double them, they will be a lot better. Um, for this, this next little section, it's all part of the like fodder, but they're all similar effects. They're when you cast an instant or cast a sorcery, you get some sort of token. So we have Tauran, 2-2 two, two Flyers. We have Metallurgic Summoning, which is, makes artifact guys. Poppet Stitcher, we're getting Decayed Zombies. We we love Decayed Zombies. We here. love them. Yeah, we have Dika, Fractal Theorists. We're going to get, can you guess? Variable Fractal Tokens. Yes, Fractal Tokens. And then the, for the last one, Shark Typhoon, which we we stretched the budget to get a Shark Typhoon because this deck really, really wanted it. And these are flying sharks. I mean, have you seen the last 12 cards we added? We had enough budget for Shark Typhoon, even on 50. Yeah, especially, you know how we knew we had enough budget? Because how? we were using Moxfield.com. Oh. And when you use Moxfield.com, the best deck building site in the whole world, you get to build your deck and it'll tell you what your cards are going to cost. You can even select what exact copies of the cards you want so that the pricing is just there for you. Yeah, when we're building budget decks, this is like the easiest way to do it. It literally saves us like a half hour building a budget deck because we're like, we only have $50 to work with. So we can constantly see the price total at the bottom and you can update to the cheapest version of all cards so that you don't have to go through and painstakingly click oh and scroll and like what is the cheapest version it doesn't matter it'll figure it out for you using tcg player prices boom gets the deck down to 50 dollars, and you can 
you might even get to play a better deck because you didn't know that certain cards, versions of cards were cheaper. Yeah, and an even cooler feature, you mentioned that they use TCG player prices. Maybe you like Card Kingdom prices. Switch it over from TCG prices to Card Kingdom prices if you really want to. Just another awesome feature of Moxfield.com. Let's move on to another category. It's spells to copy. These are the ones we really, really, really want to casualty with. You know, the other token makers, we could just play them straight up, and it's not the worst thing, but these ones we really want to double. And there's a lot of bad ones, certainly, so let's get to those. Flawless Forgery, I don't have any incentive to steal my opponent's cards. That's not what this deck does at all. Maestro's Confluence, most of the Confluences are very bad. You're going to notice a trend of cutting them, and this is no different. Reign of the Pit is like Fleshbag Marauder meets Mediocre Flyer. You're getting everybody's worst creature, and then you're getting a bad creature because the power total isn't high. It's gonna always. It's gonna be. Cl- it's gonna be three on average. I feel like everyone's got one one to sack. And Maybe that's less just, than three. It's, yeah, it's gonna be pretty garbage. Xander's packed again. We're not incentivized to play our opponent's cards at all with this deck, so we're just off of it. Man, they keep putting Call the Skybreaker in these precons, and it's just like not a good card. Even if you're paying seven mana for two five five flyers, that is not like this big splashy game ender at Commander. That might not even do anything. I just like, what an investment for no payoff. Yeah, and I know it has retrace, but it doesn't make it very much better. Zinder splits Judgment, I just don't think is a good Commander card. I think, in general, you can just avoid it. Um, even copying it's not going to feel like it's that great of a card. Same with Waste Management. Just just terrible, terrible rates on this. Even if you're paying 7 mana and you're getting 2 full player's graveyards, this is just like not worth the fact that this card is dead so much of the time. Yeah, you aren't kidding. Uh, it's a couple, only a couple ads in the uh, big spells we want to copy because we kind of, what we did here is we moved it into like ramp card draw removal and we just put the spells all over the place. So what we did add was Worst Fears. I think this is one of our biggest win cons in the whole deck. No joke. I was, when I saw this spell, I'm like, this is one of the cards this deck should have. This is absolutely going to close games. What Worst Fears does is it's eight mana. You control target players next turn and you exile the spell, but... If you do it two times, you get to take two out of the three players next turns. And I know a lot of people are used to Emrakul the Promise then. This is not that. This is, their turn is gone. You take it, and then at the you do whatever you want with their turn, and then you tap them out so they can't do anything. You can even set the first player up so that the next person you're controlling bullies them with all their creatures. It's just like absolute nonsense. And the fact that you control two out of three of the other players means it's almost like you're also taking an extra turn for yourself Mm -hmm. because most of the rest of the table didn't even go before you go again. Oh, insane. The character is insanely strong. You're going to win all the time with that. Yeah. We also have Sublime Epiphany, which usually counter spells would be bad to copy because one would counter and then fizzle. But Sublime Epiphany has a bunch of targets, meaning that it will resolve as much as possible, even though you'll try and counter the same spell twice. It's actually going to work out really well. Getting copies of creatures, they'll give us tokens to sacrifice again. We get to bounce two of the best permanents off the battlefield. This card is just overall very, very awesome to copy. And we're going to draw two cards, which is going to make this card just insane. Yeah, let's go over to the ramp removal and card draw, which every deck needs. Uh, removal? Yeah, removal. <laughs> Cow-based removal. Uh, <laughs> Spellbinding Soprano. It makes your instant sorceries cost one less. It has Encore. I don't like this guy. I don't either. I just don't. It's it's another one. Of, it's another one of the cards that we always talk about. We're not attacking. It's not even just about attacking. It's, we always talk about this is our spells deck. We don't want creatures in our spells deck, and this is a bad. We like Goblin Electromancer exists. How much better is that than this card? I'll tell you, it's about a hundred and fifty times better. We also cut hex. This card's not good. We need infinity targets for it. I yeah. don't, I'm not interested. Hex, six creatures for six mana. You have to have six targets. So if there's not six good things on the, across on the board, what are you doing with your life? I don't like this card at all. Yeah, it, it, it's, it technically is a good rate. It's just really inefficient when it doesn't work. Because if there's not enough targets, the card just ends up being not good. Like, at six mana, I never want my card not to work. Right, sorcery speed, too. Uh, River's Rebuke, your your wish.com cyclonic rift. You can hit two players if you uh, you casualty it, but it's just this, like another clunky sorcery. I'm not I'm not too high on this one. I'm, yeah, agreed. It's uh, bad. It's really bad if you don't casualty it. Yeah, it, exactly. And Sever the Bloodline, this is just a bad one for removal spell. Yes, yeah, I know that there's the it gets rid of tokens thing, but overall it's not very good. It feels like this was a... This was like one of those cards where it's like, hey, we wanted to fight against the other precons, and one of the precons makes tokens. This was like okay and standard like a decade ago, but I don't know what it's doing now. Maestro's Charm is a bad rate for card draw, bad rate for removal, so get it out of here. Body Count wants non-token creatures to die, and we don't want that at all. Yeah, I mean, we, they'll die every once in a while, but not enough to, to play this card. And it's and it's counting our side of the battlefield? No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We're, 
This deck only had like 19 creatures to start, and we cut almost all we of them. We cut like way more than half of them. We, we just made, to we put instant sorcery token makers, which are so much better in this deck. Uh, we added in their place some ramp, uh, storm kiln artist, which is going to be absolutely stellar for our deck. Casualty is a copy, so that means we're going to, on every cast and every casualty, get a treasure. Two treasures if you if you for each spell that you do actually casualty. Just that's nuts. You're gonna you can have like little stormy turns maybe if you start off with that and then you're playing something else and maybe something else and you get more treasures. Resculpt, chaos warp. They're just like premium removal. We had the budget for it. They're not even that expensive. They're just gonna be two. They're two for ones when we sack some of our stupid tokens and then Joe's buttering his hand. I don't know what's going. Bread on. and butter. These are they're just bread and butter. They're, they're nothing fancy. But they're going to get the job done. Tragic Slip, actually insanely cool in this deck. The weakness of Tragic Slip is getting it to always have Morbid, which can be troublesome. This deck will always have Morbid because you're going to sacrifice a creature in order to casualty it, meaning you get to just kill two creatures for one mana. And if, is that a good rate, Beezy? It is. And Malicious Affliction is almost the same thing. It's, it's going to destroy two non-black creatures if we have Morbid, which is always. So now we get to pay Black Black at instant speed to, to Doomblade four things. That's a lot better than regular Doomblade, and it kind of embarrasses Hex. Yeah, uh, release the Gremlins, which could have could be here or could be in our token maker spot, depending on where you want to put it. You just get to destroy. You only have to pay half the mana you would normally pay to destroy all. Just get rid of all of them and get two twos, depending on how many artifacts you destroyed. Them being artifacts. Them being obviously them being artifacts. What do you think? I didn't say that. No. No. Soul Shatter. I'm going to play Soul Shatter in like every budget deck until I die or until it gets never reprinted and spikes in value because this card is like just a great commander card and doubling it up is like you're going to hit everything relevant they have. There's six creatures for three mana. Thanks, Hex. Sometimes their best creature isn't um, the the highest uh, mana value. Not often. How about, <laughs> how about how often is it not the highest or the next highest? Less. Not I was going to say not often. Up next is Reckless Endeavor. We're going to wipe the board. We're going to get a buttload of treasures unless we are the most unlucky humans ever. Like, you can get unlucky on one. Getting unlucky on two is like, oh, that's a real bad. That's a real unlucky. Yeah, you remove all the variants by casting the spell twice. It's like, yeah, you might get unlucky once, but you probably just won't get unlucky twice. Most of the time, you're just going to hit the average, which is like six damage, six treasures, and then you're going to get, you know, maybe seven damage or, you know, like if you hit enough damage the first time too it's like seven damage five treasures let's say then if you roll a two and a ten you could just deal two damage because everything's already dying i'll take my ten treasures yeah you're I, you're gonna get a lot of treasures probably more than your mana back on average also had to run away together i really really like this card in the deck because it allows us to protect our commander and we can also casually get to bounce extra creatures ultimately if we want to save our commander from something we get to go save our commander bounce another thing Casualty bounce two other things we don't control. It's gonna feel really, really good. It's basically bounce something for every player. Yeah, for, for two mana, which is not bad at all. It's, or sometimes it's just going to be bounce the uh, biggest four threats on the table. Yeah, uh, and you can use it offensively too. Uh, Arc Mage Emeritus is the last one for card draw, and it doesn't get any better than this. Every single spell you casualty draws you two cards. We have plenty of token flow for these expendable idiots that we're never not going to have this, and it's just going to go ham. Yes. And before we get into our lands, we got to shout out our generous patrons who make this channel flow. Thank you all so much. You're amazing. You're scrolling on the screen right now. You're Look at it. Your name's right there. That's you, person. You're, you're the exact opposite of an expendable decayed token because you are going to be in our hearts forever and we would never sacrifice you. And, but once we decay, then Whoa. the love will decay. Nope. Too sad. It's too sad. Too sad. Don't want to think about it. Don't want to think about it. All right. So lands, BZ. We, this, our lands, we actually were really simple on this. Uh, we cut Island, Swamp, Mountain. That's it. We only cut three lands, and we added in their place, well, only one land because it just had a lot of lands in it, uh, Shipwreck Marsh. We didn't touch the lands much. This deck uh, lacked focus. And yes. with only doing 30 changes, we really had to go in on making tokens and getting instants and sorceries to get this deck to a point that we felt like it was functional enough. This deck does need more work in the lands. Don't get us wrong. We're not saying... The lands are great, and this was a great mana base. It wasn't. But the deck, this was like, I think this was the most, I don't know what I was doing deck that we had out of these five pre -counts. Right, where it's this, it, it wants it wants to make a bunch of expendable creatures, whatever way that is. Turns out the easiest way to do that is tokens, and the fact that spells that make tokens double up as being copied to make more tokens just makes so much sense for this deck, and it's playing 25 creatures, and it's just like, okay, we have to get all of them out, and we only have 30 cuts, and this deck is 
the mana base is functional. Like it's fine. You can make it better if you had you know ten more ads. Maybe just focus on the mana base. But for this, it's like the deck's gonna function. And holy crap, is it gonna play out way more smoothly? I think this deck had like nineteen creatures, and I think we cut all but like five or maybe three. I think it was all but three. We left in like you know Electromancer and something else. Yeah, which is that's that's where all the cuts from. They had mm-hmm. to go there because those weren't functional parts of this deck. Yeah, the budget fifty bucks. You know that we spent forty eight dollars and thirty four cents on these thirty cards. Damn, we're good. We're super good. Always get right up to the edge there. And the original average mana value of the deck was three point six five. We lowered it a little bit to 3.52, so I'm proud of us. Even with adding in, like, Reckless Endeavor and Worse Fears. And uh, we had that seven mana card that makes Treasure's Brass's Bounty. Oh, yeah. We had a, a lot of big spells, and we still lowered it by a mile because all those stupid little token makers is probably the main reason. Yeah, yeah, Rotten Reunion. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what really lowered it. And, obviously, to- 30 total changes. That's going to be the standard for all these going forward. But, Joe, what about the Obscura Operation deck? This well, isn't that. Well, we actually put that video out yesterday, so why don't... Why doesn't everyone head there and check out that video if you haven't seen it? Otherwise, you can just uh, sit there patiently in your chair for us to put out a video tomorrow. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.